So in our previous videos, we've been thinking about respiration of uh, using glucose. But what if we don't have enough glucose in our diet, or we just use up all of the glycogen storage in our body? Then we need to start thinking about using other biochemical molecules as well. So number one, we can think about, we can actually use lipids. In this case, we'll be thinking about triglyceride. From AS, you would know, uh, triglyceride is made, uh, can be broken down to its uh, constituents, which are a glycerol molecule and also three fatty acids. And they all actually find some way or another to enter the respiration process. So glycerol actually is converted into pyruvate. And as you would know, it will then enter the link reaction and Krebs cycle to make lots and lots of ATP. The free fatty acids here actually undergoes what we call beta oxidation to make about 50 acetyl groups, or we say it makes about 50 acetyl coenzyme A here. And from 50 acetyl coenzyme A, they can go on to make about 500 ATP molecules. Now, you don't need to actually know how beta oxidation occurs, but just be aware of this name and this reaction and what it makes, basically. Keeping in mind in our original, uh, or using glucose, you make one glucose molecule makes two pyruvate, and each pyruvate then goes on to make 38 ATP molecules. Whereas here, from three fatty acids, you can make at least 500 ATP. So that's why we say it, fat actually has a very high energy content. Now, because each of these fatty acids contain at least 18 carbons, meaning they've got lots and lots of uh, carbon-hydrogen bonds in between, and each of these bonds actually releases a lot of energy, uh, and from that, we, that's why we can make so many acetyl groups and hence so many ATP molecules. And the next one, if we also run out of lipids, we can start using up our protein store, uh, like the ones in our muscles. And you would, again, thinking back to uh, AS, proteins are made up of amino acids. As you remember, amino acids contain an amine group and we want to get rid of that to make pyruvate. The process of removing an amine group is what we call deamination. And again, pyruvate then goes off going into Link and Krebs, generating lots and lots of ATP. There are a couple of reasons why we want to avoid using protein for respiration because number one, it makes up all the enzymes, all the structural stuff. So if we are starting to digest, use up our proteins in respiration, we are losing muscle mass. So you become thinner and thinner. You're losing enzymes as well. Apart from that, is that the amination, the reaction here actually uses up ATP. So in that sense, you are decreasing the overall or net ATP production, which is not very proficient, so therefore is not ideal. But in certain situations, if it calls for it, then you're going to have to use proteins, otherwise you will just not get enough energy to survive. In exams, they often like to ask about the respiratory quotient. The ARCA value is quite important. In exams, you need to make sure you know how to calculate it because they do like to ask that. And it's very simple. It's just saying the number of carbon dioxide molecules produced uh, divided by the number of oxygen uh, absorbed or consumed. So for carbohydrate or glucose, you would know we made six carbon dioxide from uh, and using up six oxygen and therefore our respiratory quotient is just one. Um, so very, very, very easy maths. Now for lipids, it will be 0 0.7 because actually we use up lots of uh, oxygen in beta oxidation to break the things down. So therefore this number here would increase, meaning the overall number would decrease. So hence why it's 0 0.7. As for proteins, it will be 0 0.9. So what you need to know for exam is uh, perhaps they will give you a an experimental setup, they give you the values for the uh, number of carbon dioxide produced and oxygen used up, ask you to calculate the RQ value from the data given, and then use that RQ value to suggest which respiratory substrate was being used at that in that particular experiment or by that particular organism.